If you want to be comfortable and confident when mixing in Logic, then you need to understand this. It's what I call the five stages of volume, and it's the five different stages that can affect how loud you're hearing individual sources inside your session. Now, there's actually eight, and number seven is one that people don't talk about enough, but definitely really matters, but there's five main ones, so we'll talk about those other ones in just a second. Let's start with number one, which is your region gain. Now, technically, there's a difference between gain and volume. For the simplicity's sake in this video, I'm gonna to refer to all of it as volume, but you might hear me slip in a gain every once in a while. So your region gain is the volume of your recorded audio, how loud you recorded your audio, or if you're working with a virtual instrument, the region gain in my mind is the instrument's plugin that's actually generating that sound. So it's the first point that is generating sound. So with recorded audio, it's how loud it was recorded, or if you're working with a virtual instrument, then it's typically going to be somewhere in the plugin that is generating that sound. So the synth here has a volume control over here. If you're working with a drummer region, for example, the drum kit plugin, you can control the volume of all the individual pieces of that drum kit. I don't think you can control uh, the global volume of the drum kit plugin, but if I'm wrong, let me know in the comments below if you know how to do that, I'm curious. But either way, it's going to be either the volume that's recorded or the volume that the plugin that's generating the sound with the virtual instrument is making, how, it, how loud it's set. So if you were working with recorded audio, it's really important that you get that right at the recording stage, because if you record too loud and you peak, then it was just cut off digitally on the way into the DAW. So very important that you leave headroom and don't get digital distortion on your way into Logic. Uh, but if you have recorded and it's just a little bit too quiet, you can actually turn that up with region gain, which is a really cool feature. So if you hit I to bring up this window here, I can turn this up or down with this, with of whatever region I've selected here. I can turn it up or down right here. You can also use the gain tool. And with that, you can just turn it up right on the region itself. So if you're working with a bunch of different regions, that can be a faster way to slightly adjust the region volume to get it so that the volume coming into your mixing processing is all the same, which leads me to the second stage of volume, which is your plugins. And plugins go in top-down order. So for example, if you have an amp, without this amp, the volume we're sitting at negative nine, a nice healthy signal. And in general, you wanna aim for like negative six, negative three, that's what I aim for for the most part. If you start getting past negative three, then you start risking clipping. But as long as you have some headroom, you're not hitting that digital zero, this isn't saying 0.0, .0 right here, then you're probably fine. But when I add this amp plugin on, I'm up to negative 7.2. And if I turn this gain knob up here, and maybe turn my master knob up just a little bit, and then maybe put my output up just a little bit, all of a sudden I'm peaking coming out of this plugin. So it's important that you understand each plugin probably has some amount of impact on the actual volume. A lot of times I'll set the amp setting however I want it, but then I'll use the output over here to just make sure that I'm at a nice healthy signal. I generally aim for, again, roughly negative six. Now, if you're using something like EQ, just a mixing plugin, EQ is a volume control at different frequencies. So if I turn that amp off and we see, again, we're at negative nine roughly on this recording. If I were to boost this a ton, I'm at now at negative six. If I add a little bit more down here, I'm at negative 0.6, right? So we're adding a lot of volume. So with EQ plugins, we have an output gain that allows us to adjust that volume back down so we can get it back, balance it back out so we're not judging it. One, the fact that it's louder, we tend to prefer things that are louder. So if we just made it louder with the EQ, we might just like it better because it sounds louder. And two, uh, we're not gonna throw off our mix because we've started mixing now, we add some EQ and we make it louder and that can throw off the overall feel of the mix. So output gain can really help here, just keeping your mix level, but also giving you more accurate assessment of whether or not you like the sound of what's going on in with that EQ. Okay, after our region volume, our plugin volume, then we have our fader volume. So this one is probably the most obvious to most people. If I have this really low, then the outcoming signal from this track is very low. As I bring it up, it gets louder, right? That one's pretty obvious. Then all of our tracks run into our stereo output. So that's right here. And in general, you just wanna leave your stereo output at zero. Just leave it at zero. Don't mess with it. Maybe, maybe, maybe some fine tuning automation at the end of your mix, but in general, leave your stereo output at zero. Don't mess with this volume fader right here. Now, there's actually one more stage that's hidden. So this is four, right? So we have region, we have plugin, we have fader, that's three. 
stereo output is four. And there's one more that's not super obvious. It's this one up here, or if we hit X to bring up our mixer window here, it's our master volume over here. So our master volume is our fifth and final general stage inside Logic. And this is, again, one that just keep it at zero. You can turn it down if you need to really quickly listen to something quietly, but why not just do that on your headphone output or your speaker output, right? So keep your stereo output and your master output at zero and don't worry about it. You just don't want to add or take away volume in either of those stages. Okay, so that is the first five stages. Now, really quickly, before we go on to six, seven, and eight, which are also important to understand, I want to give you something to help you get better mixes. If you're watching this, I'm guessing you might not be getting mixes that you're totally happy with. And I want to give you something totally free to help you get better mixes. It's my six-step checklist to a pro mix, specifically designed for Logic. It's completely free from the description below. It's helped out thousands of people, and it walks through a systematic approach to mixing and how you can do it inside Logic. So be sure to grab it. It's really going to help you out. But let's go and move on to number six, which is your track stack or auxes. So if I take all of these tracks here and I hold Command, Shift, and D, it's going to give me an option to put them into a folder stack or a summon stack. I always do summon stack because that allows you to also add plugins on that group of tracks together, which is pretty cool. But once I've created this, now if I have this volume here, then it doesn't matter what my volumes for these individual tracks are, they're just being turned down by this level here. And just to understand how this is set up really quickly, when you create a track stack, what you're really doing is creating what's called an aux track, and then you are sending the output of these tracks that you put inside that track stack, you're sending the output here to that aux input, that bus input here, on this aux track. And now that's one more stage of volume before it hits your stereo output and master output. So if you're using track stacks, my general recommendation is just keep them at zero, set your volumes at the individual track level. And then when you're fine tuning the mix at the very end, if you need to tweak this globally, let's say it's all of your keys or all your vocals or all your drums, and you just want to tweak it a little bit up or down or maybe automate it to get louder for one second and get quieter, do a little bit of that. But generally speaking, keep your track stacks, aux tracks, whatever you want to call them, set to zero. Okay, so that's stage six. Let's talk about seven. This is the one that I think not a lot of people actually know about, and it's your pan knob. Your pan knob is actually a volume control in its default state in Logic. So when I pan something off to the left, when it's panned to the left, we are actually just taking all the volume out of the right ear. When we pan off to the right, we're just taking all the volume out of the left ear. So I have this synth here that has a very distinct delay on it. And notice as I pan it off to the left, we don't hear any of that delay that was going on in the right ear and vice versa. All right? So if you don't want to lose what was going on in one ear, like let's say you have a stereo recording of a piano and you want to take that stereo recording, that whole stereo recording, so it gets the low end of the piano and the high end of the piano and you want to paint it all the way off to one side or you have a delay like this, whatever it is, you just need to right click on your pan knob and change it to stereo pan. And then it gives us control as I pan it over to the side. So listen to this as I pan it to the right here. It maintains all of what was going on in the left ear as well, and vice versa, right? If I switch this back to a balance knob, you lose everything that was going on in the right ear. You lose everything that was going on in the left ear. But when I switch it back to stereo pan, you get all of it in one ear. So this is one that only really matters if you need it to matter and if you're working with stereo sources with your pan knob. Uh, but it's just something that's really important to understand and is technically a control of volume, a, a stage of volume, if you will. Okay, finally, number seven is one that's not actually in Logic. It is your interface volume your headphone volume, your speaker volume. And this is so important because when students say, hey, my mix is too quiet, my mix is too quiet. When I'm mixing, it sounds so quiet. So I just kept turning everything up. I kept turning everything up and their mix was just peaking all over the place. Well, they shouldn't have continued to mix louder. They should just turn up their headphones so they heard it at the volume that they wanted to be hearing it. In mixing, we are not making our song loud. We are getting it all to sit well together. And it's really important that you keep headroom so you don't get digital clipping where your computer says, I don't know what to do with this and just cuts off the top of your song. You don't want to do that. So you want to mix with headroom, at least three, if not six decibels of headroom. So your master output here, your stereo output should only be saying maybe negative five, negative four. That's all fine. As long as you're not hitting 0, 0.0, like if I were to just crank this all the way up, that's bad. That means that 0.9 
decibels of this signal are just getting cut off by the computer. So it's very important when you're mixing that you mix at conservative levels, you keep that headroom. If you wanna hear your mix louder, you just turn it up on your interface or your headphone output so that you can hear it at the volume that you want to be hearing it. And then when we're mastering, that's when we're actually bringing our volume of the mix up to commercial standards. So important to understand that, get a, a level on your interface that you like to set it to, that you're used to listening to your mix to, try to always mix at the same volume, it's gonna save you a ton of headache. Okay, so that's the five plus three bonus stages, let's just quickly review them. First up, we have our region volume. This is the volume of the recorded audio, or if you're working with a virtual instrument, it's the volume that's coming out of the virtual instrument that's generating the sound. Second, we have our plugins, our processing. So from top down, we have each plugin and its output volume or whatever process it's doing to it, the volume that it might be impacting the sound. So be sure that you keep that region volume that hopefully you got set at the right level at the right level as you're going through the mixing process. And then we have our fader volumes. Then we have our stereo output here. Or if you're working with a track stack, the next up is actually your track stack volume. Then we have our stereo output. Then we have our master volume, which is in the top right corner. Or if we're looking in the mixer window, it's our master output over here. And you wanna keep both stereo output and master output at zero. And in my opinion, you wanna keep your track stack volumes set to zero as well. And then if you're working with any stereo sources and you're panning them, our pan knob is also a volume control, no matter what it's a volume control, but in particular for stereo sources. And then finally, your interface volume Volume, the volume that's coming out of your speakers or your headphones, just make sure that you set that volume consistently so that you're always hearing your mix roughly the same way. Okay, this is an important topic. It's really important to understand this, but it's not gonna fundamentally change your mixes unless you have a process to work through when you're mixing. So if you don't already have my six step checklist to a pro mix, it's completely free from link in the description below. So be sure to pick it up. If this video was helpful and you think it would be helpful to other people, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. It makes a huge difference. Just liking this video alone makes a huge difference. Okay, if you wanna go deeper into mixing with me, you can also check out this video here and I'll see you in another video real soon. One thing at a time.